All right, today I'm doing another project on my F-250. This applies to 2011 to 2016 Ford F-250 350s. I have an, a base XL model with a 6.2 gas engine. And I'm going to be upgrading the instrument cluster from the standard uh, instrument cluster with just the small uh, display to a Lariat style information center instrument cluster. The first thing you have to do is find a compatible uh, instrument cluster. So if you have a diesel truck, you need to look for one from a diesel truck. If you have a gas truck, you need to look for one from a gas truck. And really the only difference in the instrument cluster itself uh, is the fact that it says ultra low sulfur diesel on the, the cluster on the lens there. Um, as far as the clusters go, you're going to have to be year specific. So 2011, 2012 are pretty much compatible. Um, after that, like 13, 14, 15, and 16 are pretty compatible. Um, but you want to check uh, compatibility before you just buy any instrument cluster. There are some differences in the years. Also, you want to look for mileage. Uh, the one thing about a used instrument cluster is whatever the mileage comes with, it actually is stored in the instrument cluster, not, not the PCM on these trucks. So it will be what it says it is when you plug it in, um, which means that if you buy it from a junkyard, they usually know the mileage before they pull it, and they'll, they'll send it along with you. In my case, I was lucky. I was able to find one with the exact same mileage. Uh, there used to be some companies out there that uh, could change the mileage in your instrument cluster. And you may still be able to find one like that, uh, but it's not quite as easy as you think. Even Ford dealers, they're used to dealing with new instrument clusters that have a zero miles on them, and then they have to input the initial mileage only uh, which was on the old cluster, and then they have to download all the as-built data into the instrument cluster. And then that brings me to the next thing. Once you do get the instrument cluster installed, it is just as easy as sw swapping them out and plugging it in, uh, but there will be some programming involved to get the features set up correctly with your truck. If you get lucky and you get an instrument cluster out of a truck that has pretty much the exact same features, uh, you may not have to do anything. Um, it can range from that to you may have some warning lights on, Let's say the cluster had uh, a trailer brake controller enabled and you don't have a trailer brake controller on your truck, you're probably going to get a warning message about that. So that's why it is important. You can use free programs like Forescan to change that, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. All right, so now we're going to remove the factory instrument cluster. And there's a couple things you got to do to get to it. Put the seat back here, make it a little easier. And we're going to remove the bottom panel here, and it's just pushed on. You just Pull that off, set it aside. Then you'll see a couple screws. They're seven millimeters that hold the bottom of this on. It looks like it'll come out. I think we're gonna have to remove the uh, center bezel here on the radio though. So let me go ahead and do that. Move your power socket on this side or whatever you have over here. This side's where your sink or your line in would be. Try that out with a flat blade. There's seven millimeter screws that are behind here, one each. You take those out and this will pop right off. Right. Once that's set out of the way, it's just to allow this plastic to come off in here. All right, once you get that off, it was caught under the steering wheel on this little lip here. All right, now before you completely remove it, we want to inhale the as-built settings from this cluster. That way we can pass them over to the new cluster. So I'll show you how to do that with Forescan. All right, so while the computer loads up here, I use this um, modified Elm USB scanner. And there's a lot of people who use Bluetooth scanners, uh, but the risk with that is if for some reason while you're writing to your vehicle, um, that signal is interrupted. The uh, 2.4 gigahertz signal that Bluetooth uses 
then you will corrupt your computer and probably destroy your vehicle. So it's uh, anyone, any Ford tech actually uses the real Ford IDS software knows that you should use a wired connection at all times if possible. So I'll go ahead and turn on the truck. I'll load up Ford Scan. Click the connect button. Goes through its initial questions. Right now it's looking for all the modules. Alright, now it's asking me to set the can system to the MS can. Flip the switch. IPC module. Actually, we want to be in here in module programming, which is this right here. The IPC module configuration. I'm going to go to the as built format. We're going to hit play. It says please set it to high speed can. So flip the switch back. Okay. Okay. All right, and these are your only settings for your uh, instrument panel right here. So what I want to do is I'm going to save all because I want to save these just in case. We'll say this is 2011 F250 IPC and we'll put the date 7, 19, 18 and we'll say old Just save it as something you know. All right, once you have that saved, um, you'll be able to load that into your new cluster if necessary. While we're in here though, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Go back into the module programming. And let's look at what our possible configurations are. These are all the things that you can change Four scan, uh, welcome mode, trailer brakes, um, the size of the fuel tank, engine hour meter, belt minder, auto lock, auto unlock, auto lamp delay switch. There's a lot, a lot of options in here that you can change, um, and those are the options that will be different, possibly with the new cluster that you get. All right, so we're done in here for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. All right, so to actually remove the cluster, there are just two bolts, one over here and one over here, and then it should come right out. tilt forward and this is where the wiring harness plugs in right up here on the top you can tell it's an old work truck there's a lot of dirt and dust back here So here's the two clusters themselves, and a lot of people would probably like this one just the way it is with the silver look. I'm gonna keep the XL work truck look going on the inside, so I'm gonna swap out the bezels here. So it has the same black bezel. I'll get it all nice and cleaned up on the new instrument cluster with the larger display. And they go on with these little plastic rings here. I just wanted to see how they look on there, so I'll probably end up having to take those off. So here's what it looks like when everything's put back together. Definitely is a unique piece because it's just the black XL model with the full display. 
I'll go ahead and put this one back together also, just so it's protected. All right, now we're back in the truck. We're ready to start reversing the installation here. One thing you also need is your set of buttons. The uh, instrument cluster uses a different set of buttons with the four-way control or the five-way control here. And the part number that's on the bottom right here is BC3T9E74W or 740AEW. Focus on that. And I just happen to have these lying around from when I purchased the steering wheel. That's what it came with. So to get these out, you just take a little flathead screwdriver, carefully pry it out, unplug those, plug these in. That's all there is to that. Alright, get it plugged in. All right, here's the big reveal. All right, so main thing that I have here, obviously besides my door ajar, trailer brake module fault. And that's because I don't have a trailer brake module yet. That's going to be another video. Go ahead and clear out all the warnings here. Alright, so here we are. So we've got our mileage, which is good. Trip mileage here, fuel economy. truck apps I'm using my new controls here to get out of this stuff we don't have rear park aid so I'll turn that off review camera that's not an option on here at least not with the factory it's trailer brake mode okay trailer receipt control There it is, so everything seems to work. Yeah. Gauge mode. truck does not have a compass though so that does not work and seem to have lost my outside temperature so these are some of those things that we're gonna have to try to work through here Let's see. switch on four-wheel drive the differential so all that works all right we'll go I'm going to go into foreskin now and look at it and show you how to adjust the settings if you need to all right so turn the ignition on I'm going to reconnect the foreskin let it go through its process again all right now that it's found everything we've got Data trouble codes, steering column, control failure, lamp fade control still says it's not working. I think it's because I have LED lights. Instrument panel, let's see. Lost communication with trailer brake control module, okay. Lost communication with parking assist control module, yeah, we know all this. 
invalid data received from body control module and invalid data received from compass module. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll go into our modules programming here. Instrument panel or instrument cluster panel control as built format. Let's go ahead and grab that. get what this is what the new cluster has in it we're gonna save that say stock lariat cluster okay now we're gonna load the stuff that we saved earlier this one and you'll see it change and then we're going to click write all yes okay please select the ignition off and then back on click okay So as you can see, we've regained our temperature, outdoor temperature. And now that we have the correct VIN number and all of our previous truck settings flashed back into the new cluster. So like I said, the only thing you cannot change or score for scan is the mileage. All right, well, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Leave a comment. If I didn't answer your question in the video, I'll try to leave uh, or respond to your question in the comments section. And hopefully you liked it. Thanks. See you next time.